Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So Bill, what we're gonna talk about today is the rest of 2024. Okay. okay. The housing market, in my opinion, is a total mess. Okay, especially with condos in Florida, mm -hmm. insurance costs, taxes, I go through a whole. My question is, and then what this article is about that we're gonna talk about, that you're gonna to have to answer a lot of questions because you're the realtor, is, is it savable? You think 2024, we should just write it off because of the <laughs> NAR lawsuit, uh, because of prices, inflation, because unemployment's going up? Mm -hmm. Should we just write off 2024 or is it savable? We're gonna read this article and I really wanna know your opinion on this stuff. And tell us if you think we have to wait till 2025 to have a normal market again or beyond. Like I personally think the rest of 2000, before we even read this, mm -hmm. I think the rest of 2024 is going to be shot, especially now the kids are going back to school, you know, then we'll have the holidays. And it, I don't I don't think it matters who becomes president. I think the first half of 2025 is going to be shot also. I, I don't think we're going to see a, a turn for the better till the middle of 2025 what do you think okay so before we even get into the article so what what is what would we so we can set a parameter of what our topic is regardless of what the article says what is shot what would we what, how would we define 2024 is shot like i don't want to like listings are way up okay listings are way up yep time on market's longer time on market is more interest rates are still up yep okay people can't afford to buy houses mm-hmm you know, everybody's having a hard time. Even it, Gen X and millennials, it's a four-year low of owning a house. Right. Unemployment is going up. There's potential wars around the world. Yep. There's a lot of uncertainties going on. All right, so we're calling it uncertainty and more, when people are uncertain, they tend to Hunker freeze. down. Right, yeah. they just freeze and, and do nothing. Like we just left a new construction site. Yep. Okay, and they're having a 30% cancellation rate. Right. Now, do you know what the pre-pandemic cancellation rates were? I have, I'll be honest I with you, I have no idea. Because I don't know. I don't, it was just a curiosity question on that one. Um, I'd like good, to see. That's a good question to figure yeah. that one out. Because if somebody just says, oh, it's 30%, but as an example, well, it was 25% pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, it was zero probably. Yeah, but that's, that's a different animal. So that's a unicorn year. We got to start moving some of these pieces out of there, you know, when it comes to, so, because we're talking about what's normal, right? Mm -hmm. So we can't say that those unicorn years during the pandemic are normal years. So we have to, if we're going to say what's normal, we have to get rid of the abnormal four years and go backwards to see, yeah. because we got to have a basis. Well, people are saying that we're heading because of, other reasons other than you know the mortgage crisis mm -hmm. back in 2006 they're saying that we are going to have a bad market um, just like 2006 7 and 8 and it's not because of subprime loans it's just a different animal now now it's just a different animal and you know they're saying that there was one report today and I don't believe this but the report came in that the feds you know we were like oh they're gonna cut a quarter percent everybody was hoping I didn't think it was gonna happen but some people are now saying that they're hoping for a, a one and a quarter percent cut. What? Yeah, because they think that we're going to be in trouble, and which I said think is that's ridiculous. I think that's ridiculous. I don't. That's that's. But let's let's read this. I think they put the decimal in the wrong spot. Maybe. Maybe. Let's <laughs> let's read this. In the meantime, if you like this kind of content, do me a favor. Consider subscribing. It's greatly appreciated. Give it a thumbs up, bell, and share the video. And let's get started, Bill. All right. Let's see here. Any sales growth momentum in the real estate market we might have had early in the year is gone. Now home sales contracts are coming in pretty consistently fewer than last year, 4.9% fewer in most recent weeks. Do you believe that? Yeah, that would make sense because time on mark, and here's why, I mean, just to sum that up, that's it. in our area, I, don't, I can't speak to the rest of the country, but I can just look at you know, the national numbers as an average. But time on market is extending. Now, there are a few small micro markets per se um, from friends that I know live in that area that it's hot, right? You know, it's just, it's insane to get a contract right now. But 
for the majority, time on market is a lot longer right now. All right, let me ask you this question then. Do you think this downturn right now, we're, we're, you know, we're in um, August, do you think it's just a seasonal adjustment? Kids getting ready to go back to school, you know, people finishing up their vacations. vacations. Well, we usually, in our area, we usually see a little bit of a slump from this point going forward. So I guess my question to you, since this is the year area, is is this a slump, a natural slump that we have every year because of school and vacations and yeah. all that stuff? Or do you feel it's a little bit more? Like, well, I feel it's a little bit more, but, but it's a you... it is a natural slump. It's normal. Like, this is the, this is our normal. We start to decline because everybody's going, everybody wants to be finalized, you know, moved, so on and so forth, so that they get their kids in school zones mm -hmm. and all that stuff, for, and, and other reasons as well, obviously. Right. You know, jobs, what have you. So, but, the, you know, the school thing is a huge determiner. But we are starting to see a slowdown, and I think that the slowdown is more even the numbers are showing that it's more than what it was in the past even when i try to because i try to go back pre-pandemic I, I could i'm not comparing to the you know today to the same time two and a half years ago when we had the most sales in history like that's that makes a good headline but that doesn't help people make decisions okay so on the supply side new listings are slightly more than a year ago but pulling back, in fact, coming soon, pre-listings are now running behind last year by 5%. I don't believe that. That implies continued slowdown for home sales in the second half of the year. Fewer buyers, fewer sellers, too. I think there'll be fewer buyers, but I don't think there'll be fewer sellers. At least here in Florida, I don't see that. Because I follow the market. I agree with that. Yeah. You, you agree that there's going to be fewer buyers and fewer sellers for the rest of 2024? Yeah, I don't think we're going to see as much. Um, there's a lot of factors right now, you know, that, and, and like we did the article, I've got some, actually we talked about the stats, I don't think we did a recording on this yet, but, um, you know, there were a lot of questions about what happens during an election year, you know, and how, how it affects the market. Mm -hmm. And while it, I think you even kind of took a step like, whoa, but when you kind of break down the numbers, yes, it does slow down real estate transactions in a, you know, leading up to an election year. However, historically, right after the election year, the months to follow are usually higher. So you make up for it. All right. So that, that there's a roughly 5% swing. We should do the we, we should do that video. I think that'd be a really good video. Okay, to well, do. let's do it. I wonder whether in the 2024 housing market is beyond saving. Are we past the opportunity for declining mortgage rates and help demand and pick up on sales growth? Let's look at details of the U.S. housing market at the end of July 2024. Take over. There are 677,000 single-family houses unsold on the market right now, plus another 180,000 condos. That's up 1.3% over the last week. Inventory continues to climb each week, which is normal for late July. We're expecting for inventory of unsold homes to peak around October and decline for the holidays. The peak inventory looks like it'll be about 700,000 single family homes. We'll finish the year with about 620,000. That'll be a 20% increase over the end of 2023. 20% is a big number. That's a huge number. So when, you know, we, we, we constantly break down this day a week ago, because you notice that one, that was the first time we've had a video. Oh, that, from a year said, ago. A year ago, and then it says, well, last week. Right. You know, so it's to fit the stat that they need. So that's why we try to constantly look at the big picture on this. So taking that piece out of this article, there'll be a 20%, they're expecting that there's gonna be a 20% increase over the end of, of home sales over the end of 2023. So that's good because now we went from this super high peak of 6 million plus sales. Then we came down into the 4.1 or something along those lines, million sales. And then now we're starting to creep back up again. Yeah. So it, that says to me, we're healthy. And it brings me back to what is normal. Let's see what they say. Right now, there's a 40% 40% more homes unsold on the market than last year at the end of July. 40% is a big number. That's a big number. As mortgage rates rose late in this year, so did inventory. This year, I'm expecting late year surge. So the growth of over 2023 will subside a bit. 
Inventory is up in every state and several states have more unsold inventory than they did in 2019. Okay, so we cried about inventory. Right. Well, we need inventory, we need inventory. And, you know, the whole thing is, <laughs> we screwed up on our videos too, and, and I'm the first to admit it because when there wasn't a lot of sales, we're like, oh, there's no inventory, there's no inventory, there's no inventory. Right. I was saying that, okay? Right. Because that's what I thought. Then we had a pile of inventory on the market and the sales still didn't come. I'm like, oh shoot, I screwed up. Well, I mean, you didn't screw up, but this is just the way it is. That's why they're prediction videos and we don't know. But we cried about inventory and then now that there's inventory, we're crying that there's inventory and things are taking too long. So there's a whole bunch of other factors that kind of come in. I know that we got to read the article, but there's a lot of other factors that come into this, you know, the, to say is 2024 salvageable. Um, is it? You know, who I knows? don't think so. Who knows? But what's again, I go back. I'm just playing devil's advocate. What, what's salvageable? OK. It's a failure if we don't get 1% interest in uh, decrease, you know, and we only got maybe a quarter percent. I think they're talking about sales and... But know. if they're predicting that they're up 20%, does that mean that it was unsalvageable? That's why I say, what's salvageable? It's a good... I, I like it. It's, it's a I, good I just think, here's the thing. Between the new rules coming out August 17th... That affects everything. Okay, NAR. So it affects everything, real estate. You know, people, it affects everybody. Yeah, people don't even know what's going on yet. No. And, and if a buyer has to pay two or three percent to the buyer's agent and they don't have it right that's gonna be a problem yeah we were just having this conversation off camera yeah that's that's going to slow things down right interest rates i don't think will drop that much unemployment's ticking up inflation is still here mm -hmm. you know so we might even have hyperinflation there's potential wars around the world and everybody everybody is worried when you worry you don't do nothing I don't do nothing. If I'm worried about money or portfolio or what's going on, I just cease and I stop everything. Right. And that's what a lot of people that's are doing. What a lot of people are doing. You know, the 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 NAR lawsuit. There's, I think, there's enough people that know about it to an extent that more people will know about it now because obviously we have to start talking about it. Yeah, uh, you say, it's hey, coming into effect you want me to show you this house? Sign this buyer broker agreement. Uh, yeah, Basically, I mean, there's, a, yeah, there's a lot more to it than that. But yeah, there's, it, but it does affect things. And then it, it's like, oh, is this going to be another expense for me? You know, there's it's, caveats to that. But Some people don't have an extra two to three percent to buy a, to pay a buyer's agent. Right. But I think that they need representation. Exactly. That's why we're going to do a video on this once all the stuff gets all right, settled. I'll, I'll so let it go. Move so on. You, we we need that because we can't talk about things that don't exist yet. All right. So go, go ahead. New listings continue. Recent trends. So there were 68,000 new listings of single family homes this week. There are fewer sellers than normal and slightly more than last year. But the gap from last year is closing sellers seem to be breaking off or backing off i guess sellers are as tired of waiting for mortgage rates to fall as buyers are um, it, and i agree with that at some point it's okay i still need to sell my house yeah especially if you're moving <laughs> and getting divorced or yeah. you just right medical like, emergency hey i'm gonna wait to time the market but now the waiting, the, people have gotten anxious and they're like, well, I just need to sell my house, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, but I did speak to somebody yesterday, actually, at an appointment, and they're interested in selling their house and they kind of wanted to get how it all worked out, but they're not, they're, they're pre-planning, which was good, because I, I like pre-planning for mm -hmm. people. And they're not gonna do it till after the holidays, because they just don't want to deal with moving with Halloween. Well, that's normal for a lot stuff. of people. Yeah, but this is normal, so I expected that, right, when we went into it. So. In Texas, for an example, there were 8,300 new listings for single family homes this week. And that is almost exactly where it has been in late July for several years. Earlier really? in the year, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Okay, I thought that would be different. Yeah, earlier in the year, Texas had around 10% more new listings every week than in recent years. Huh. That's not true for, that's not true anymore as 2024 shifted from a growing number of sellers to flat compared to last year for the well, Texas market. I didn't know that about Texas. I thought, it, I thought it would be a lot more. Florida and Arizona show similar plant patterns. These states lead the inventory growth with new supply and weak demand early in the year, but no longer have that supply side momentum. So unsold inventory is not growing. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe that. 
that unsold inventory is growing? Not growing. Oh. It says unsold inventory is not growing. And the only way it's not growing is if people are taking the houses off the market because they're not getting sold. Right, so they're not comparing canceled and expireds. Maybe. But now remember, this does take, this is national, not No, but they're talking market, about, but, they're talking about Florida. You know, or statewide rather, not just our local market. So it's interesting. Hmm. But like, I know just in certain micro areas that inventory used to be like 20 houses for sale at this time of year. Now there's 80 or 90 for sale. And it's, a lot of it's because of insurance and stuff. Right, right. Well, yeah, so now that would be its own unicorn. You know, like, look, we just had a storm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that's going to change some people's mindsets for those specific areas that were affected. Yeah, nationally, 68,000 new listings this week are unsold, plus another 14,000 new listings that went imme immediately under contract. That number, 14,000 immediate sales, is very low compared to the last few years in July. Overall, there were just 4% more sellers this week than the same week a year ago. Seller moment momentum has evaporated. This is just telling me that people are taking, nationally, are just taking the houses off the market. They're like, hey, I can't get the price I want. Right. So, it is what it is. Like you, you're selling one of my properties and that listing is expiring in October. October, yep. So I'm pretty much, I'm not going to renew it. I'm going to be like, screw it. I'm not going to get the money that I want for it. Right. So I'm just going to take it off the market and I'm going to wait a couple of years and then I'll put it back on the back market. Up. Right. But some people can't afford to do that. Right. No, it makes sense. You know, and sometimes people just put things up, you know, it's like, hey, if I can get a great price, I can maybe offload one of these properties or I'll downsize if I get this price. If not, eh, it's no big deal. I'll be happy sitting here. So, so new listings, mm -hmm. are they, so do you agree that they're slowing down? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think they are slowing down. Because people like, people like forget, let's talk about a normal market. People like putting their houses up towards the end of the year, right? Before school ends, usually. Well, no, nobody likes to sell their house at Christmas. No, they put it on before school ends. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So maybe a month or two before school ends so they could time it correctly that school ended and then the house is sold and then they can yeah, move. Yeah, they can move, yeah. And everything. Or, or, you know, the month or two before school ends so that. And, and I know November and December with the holidays and everything, nobody wants to deal with people walking through their houses. Right, yeah, it's a, it's a tough time. Unless it's year. an empty house, and Florida has a lot of empty houses. True. If they're second homes, then it, I don't think that matters. Right, because we do have a pretty solid second home market here. Okay, so we went over all this stuff. So what are your predictions for the rest of 2024? You think it's just going to remain the same? You think it's going to get worse? Is it savable? Just say yes or no. Those are the two answers. But we haven't defined savable, so I'm not going to say yes or no to savable. <laughs> is it going to remain the same? Because right now it's not good. It, no. The, it, the, but at the end of the day, if the, this, according to this article, if we close out 20% higher than we did last year, I think that's a good thing. What, I, what the problem is, there's too many unknowns that you've already hit the head on twice. You know, potential wars. We have no idea what the Fed's going to do with the interest rate. We're expecting it to come down a little. You which know, is going to do nothing. Which, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's an election year, which does have this ever so slight effect, but every little piece mm -hmm. affects things. You know what I mean? It's not just this one nail in coffin type thing. Every little piece takes away or shifts people into another direction to give necessarily an excuse not to do something, whether it'd be for personal reasons or it's just financial like hey i i'm not moving right now because it's way too up in the air and i know that i can afford this but if i go to here eh, maybe not so you're basically what you're saying basically is things aren't going to change i, I don't think there's going to be this giant shift at so the end at of the, the year end of the day, it's not savable well I don't, i'm not saying that it's not savable because that it. would mean it's not savable because we can't define what's <laughs> savable and not savable like that to me when you say something is, is, there gonna, is, is there gonna be a rush out for people to buy houses no okay that's all you don't want that anyway that doesn't make i think that's detrimental 
Like, I really think that if we had this giant flood of buyers roll into the market, I think that's a detriment. Because what's it going to do if we have a giant flood of, of buyers onto the market with the listings it's, it's today? It's going to increase the value of the home and the prices of homes are going to be priced higher. Exactly. And we're going to, it's the feel like we're guys starting to cycle over again. Do us a favor. <laughs> comment below. Tell us, do you think that 2024 is savable or it's not savable? Or is 2025 going to be a good year or a bad year? We really want to hear your comments and what you guys think. That's today's video. Do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really, really helps the channel and it's greatly appreciated. And we'll talk to you soon. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching. All right, bye.